It's your boy Chig from Guna Eagle Eye coming to you again with a brand new video. Uh, this time, I'm going to do something a little different for today's video. We're going to make some Italian lasagna. Now, I only put it like that because this one behind you is part Italian. And she says, Oh, well, the way I make lasagna is all right, but it's not the Italian way. So, we're going to learn the Italian way. So, why don't you join me? This should be interesting. All right. So, for today's ingredients, you'd be happy to know I actually know what all the things are. <laughs> There's no ginger. Uh, so, for today's uh, experience, we have some pasta sheets, salt and pepper, as always, garlic, of course the onions, apparently uh, this one loves her onions, <laughs> so we've had to chop a lot of them up, I would have half of that personally, chorizo, uh, tomato paste. This one is licking my feet, would you believe? <laughs> Tom <laughs> Tom tomato paste. Or tomato paste for you non Americans. Is this. Chili. Chilies. These are chilies. Some chopped tomatoes. Some chorizo. Some mince. Some flour, would you believe? Some ooh, 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 mustard. <laughs> she loves putting stuff like hate in it. And uh, butter. So let's see what we do with all of this. So you start off with reasonably low heat um, and you put some olive oil in there, which we've already done. And you start off with putting onions in there. So you put all the onions in there. Put all the onions in there. And then you want to add some salt at this stage. Just to salt the onions. You don't necessarily want them brown at this stage. It's just to soften them. And again, we're using the Himalayan salt because apparently this is better for you than 50% car carbon, or sorry, sodium salt. <laughs> I have my doubts about that, but okay. So, stirring this away. Softening the veg. As we do. And then we add the garlic in there. You want to always want to cook with garlic wherever you can, especially in today's climate where everyone is battling corona this, corona that. It's important now you have some immune boosting elements into your dishes. Ginger, which we cooked with in the previous video, is another one of those uh, ingredients that you could cook with. Not in this particular dish, however. So you can see it's just starting to soften and get a bit brown. So we're gonna add our first meat element which is the chorizo. Yeah, that's right. I know the Italian way of saying it. <laughs> oh, sorry, the Spanish way of saying it, excuse me. Lee will be so proud because he, he lives out there. Right. Just starting to brown now. Pick up some color. It's also taking some color of the chorizo. So, we now start to, just as we start to soften that, we'll come back and we'll introduce the main event, which is the meat. Okay, and now you add the main event, which is the mince. There's many ways to do this. I personally like to break it down before actually putting it into the plate, just so that as much of the meat captures, excuse me, Am I in the shot? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just so it's easier to fry and the meat can pick up as much of the heat as possible. Yeah. No, no disrespect or shade to Robbie, but I noticed in his video, he just puts the thing straight in there. 
And uh, yeah, we'll just put that until it's brown. We'll come back and then I'll show you what to do after that. Obviously, remember to always wash your hands after touching raw meat as well. Of course. So as you can see, uh, the 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 mince is browning nicely. Um, now it's time to add my favourite, the chilies. So you add a little bit of this in. Yeah. You know I ain't dating no girl that can't handle a chili. Let's be real. There you go. Add a little bit of that in. And a little element I forgot to mention earlier. Some of this oregano. Should have known better. All Italians love oregano. <laughs> so, there you go. Apparently, add plenty of this in. Open the other side. Be generous. Be generous. Look at this one. Definitely Italian. Keep going. <laughs> All right, easy. Nah, keep going. Are you being serious? <laughs> yeah. Even I don't add this much mix herbs, you know. <laughs> That'll do. All right. And I thought I was mad with my mix herbs. All right, so there you go. Oregano. And you just mix that. See, browning that, frying that on, so that the mince takes up the, the spice. You might want to just lower the heat a little bit. I'm glad that other people are going to hear your dodgy accents today. Listen, <laughs> what's occurring is not dodgy. It's on point. And the way you say Primark, though. Primark? Yeah, uh, it's Primarney, everyone knows. That. Okay. Listen, if, if Reds is watching this, he'll be going mad at the way you say <laughs> Primark. That's his, that's his establishment. Okay. And now, we'll come back and probably add some chopped tomatoes. So we'll join me for that section. Okay, next stage is the tomato puree. Yeah, I know what I said. Just be easy. Apparently, this one does it in a different way to how I do it, <laughs> right? So, tomato puree. Tip for tomato purees, if you do put it in before the chopped tomatoes, is turn the heat right down to it's very low so that the meat has an opportunity to soak in as much of the tomato puree as possible before then add in the chopped tomatoes. Okay, you laughing at Oh, I can see what she's laughing. She's laughing because this thing isn't even pierced. It looked like it was pierced. I wonder what she's laughing at. Right. Like it particularly tomato -y. Yeah. So you can see I've turned down the, the, the cooking element of it. So now I just allow that redness to really seep into that meat. Adopt the colour of it. Should turn nice and red. Almost the, the colour we started the meat with. nice and rich and just you can see that juice coming from it okay so as you can see two tins of tomato chopped tomatoes have gone in there now um my gut away would be like why waste two that could be another meal but uh, this one and her italian ways no it has to be tomato -y. so as you can see Chopped tomatoes have really swallowed the mince now. Really adopted it. Still on low heat. I tend to have it on low heat when I put chopped tomatoes in there. So, just want to continue stirring it until you are ready to make the top of the lasagna. Wouldn't you join me for that? All right, so it's time for the white sauce. Uh, not the uh, Bushamel sauce. Chris will know what I mean by that. I say that. A shout out to shout out to Reds. Um, okay, so you start off with butter. A little bit more, just a little bit of butter. So you just put that on there. Remember, my hands have what been washed, so I can touch the butter. Because I know, I know the other half is having anxiety right now. All right, you turn. 
this on. So as you can see, the butter's already starting to do its thing. Just push that around a little bit. Oh. Uh -huh. So you want your sauce nice and buttery and melty. Then, believe it or not, I can't quite believe it. Oh yeah. You start with, you put the flour in. But that wasn't going just yet until the butter does melt. As this one likes to tell me. Sorry. Sorry. So, as you can see, here's the butter just melting. We, what we're doing at the moment is we are adding, we are going to make some white sauce. Not bushamel sauce. Um, uh, my friend uh, Greg will know what I'm talking about when I say that. But the white sauce. So we're trying to make it nice and creamy. So we just added some butter in it. Um, we would advise that you put maybe, what, maybe 100 grams of butter in it, something like that. Two tablespoons. Now, this by the way should be on very low heat. And now it's time, believe it or not, to add two tablespoons of flour. No, I did not stutter. Flour. I'm skeptical, but let's see. He's obviously never made white sauce before. <laughs> no, I'm not, to be honest. Dormio is my friend. Look at the insult. It is an insult to me. Alright. It's about whisking that round now. That's how it turns into a nice flavour. We need some of the flour. Need to add more flour? Yeah. I'm cooking, you see. <laughs> what are you doing here? Teach me. No, you see. Following a recipe. That's true. Just because it's a recipe you agree with. Alright. Alright. Just to see it starting to thicken up now. So you start to add a little bit of milk. Just a little bit. A little bit at a time. Yeah. Just whisk that up. And as it starts to build up, you can see it's just starting to turn doughy. Add a little bit more milk in it again. Again. It's about whisking it. Just hold on to the handle, not like my arm. Did I tell you what? I was going to say you do that. You help us out. Oh my god. The man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like cleaning them anyway, so don't worry. There we go. Just see, she's just starting to adopt a rather favourite colour. Maybe she does know what she's talking about. There we go. I've never seen a whisk like this, by the way, guys, have you? My favourite one. Starting to turn nice and thick, and all of a sudden, from that doughy mixture, it's starting to turn rather creamy, thick but not quite too doughy. I feel. Who hates ice cream cooks? What's going on here? Let's tell you, she's like that with a driving too. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Women make the best drivers. Uh, hey. This one? Yeah. Alright. Because she's so picky. And then let her actually direct it. Alright, so you put a little bit of mustard in it. You don't want to put too much. A flat teaspoon is enough. When I say a flat teaspoon, just scrape the top of it off on the side. And it should be good to go. I hate mustard, so this is going to be quite an experience for me. Yeah? I want to just continue to whip that up and we'll show you what happens after when this is ready. Now, um, as you can see, it's been thickened out following the flour being cooked out a little bit more. It's nice and smooth now, as you can start to see, but nice and thick as well. Uh, I also added some salt and some pepper to the actual sauce itself. 
Um, speaking of which, I added salt and pepper to the mince as well, uh, just to give it a little bit more flavor. Um, also added some sugar to the mince, just to help with the uh, acidity of the sauce, um, as well as a little bit to the bechamel sauce as well. And now, it's important to turn the heat off and add a little bit of uh, cheese to the actual sauce itself. Yeah? Not enough. And then a little bit of milk as well. No, a little bit more cheese. A little. <laughs> okay, can we start again? Okay. So now the next stage is but a couple of things I've got going on now. Um, in terms of the actual pasta, uh, pasta slices itself, what you want to do is you just want to put a little bit of water into a frying pan or a pan of any type of description um, and just let essentially it soften. Don't want it necessarily to boil. I know everyone has their own technique. This tends to be the one we use. Uh, we've put a, a little splash of olive oil just to make sure that the two sheets themselves don't stick together um, and it, there's no point crowding the pan so you've got time make sure you leave yourself enough time to cook these things give it two three minutes and uh, just essentially let the thing soften if a film uh, builds up um, then essentially all you want to do is add a little dollop of milk on it and it will just I thought that's what you said it's important to preheat the oven. I preheated it to 200 with a view of actually cooking at 180. So have that done before you actually do this stage. And then the bechamel sauce. Now, everybody has their own technique off camera. The other half gave me a technique of how to do it. As I keep repeating through this thing, happy wife, happy life. So I'll just do it through as she asks. So you just want to spread that around, make sure you're covering all the bases. Oh, goodness gracious. Apparently, don't press hard. <laughs> That's why I don't do it like this. Yeah, just completely push it all to the edges. Make sure you cover it as much as possible. Try and try and be too artistic with it. Yeah. Now you want to push that to the side. To the sides. Cover all the sides with it. Um, and then it's time for the cheese. Again. The other part of everybody's favourite bit. You just want to just... You don't necessarily need to cover the absolute corners of this. Because the cheese melts, it travels. I was taught that a long time ago with someone making lasagna. So, just make sure... Obviously, don't pack everything into the middle. Just make sure it covers at least some part of the lasagna itself. Okay, so... These chips I've not really paid a lot of attention to just because they are just, they're not shop bought. They were potatoes and they've been chopped up uh, very kindly by the wifey um, and prepared. Um, left with the, the skin on just to give it more of a homely feel. Um, and what essentially we'll do with these is, or what we've already done with these, excuse me, is we put it onto on the boil for 20 minutes or so. You probably saw it in the background of a couple of the shots. Just boil it, boiling away, minding its own business. Now we're going to put it in the oven. But before we do that, some key things that we're going to do. First of all, olive oil. As you can tell, it seems to be our best friend because it's in every dish. <laughs> so. Just, just helps with the cooking generally. And flavour and general health, quite honestly. I don't actually know what this is, but I've been told it's spicy. <laughs> it's a banging seasoning. 
if I, if it's banging season, that means Reds is gonna be watching this like, bro, how the hell can you not know what red salt is? <laughs> okay. I like pe peppercorns whenever I can help it. Sounds like the dog's collar. As you can see. Um, touch of Himalayan. Because why not? Uh, a touch of this type of pepper. Because again, I'm a pepper fiend. Listen, if it was up to me, I'd put scotch bonnets in this thing. Anyone w watching with judgment, just consider that. And then this. We thought we had chili flakes. We don't. Therefore, I'm using paprika. If you don't know what paprika is, I can't have this conversation with you. <laughs> Everybody should have at least some kind of paprika at home, at the very least. Even if they don't use it, but they've, mainly because they don't know how to use it. Fine, I can forget that. Strong though, so you don't want to put too, too much. Not strong as in heat, don't get me wrong. Just in taste. All right? And then in the same oven, hopefully, if you could have, you can fit it into your oven, um, you're gonna put this in the oven. Again, it's at gas mark 180. So, I don't know why I keep saying 180, 180. <laughs> All right? And you put that into the oven. Wow. On the top shelf, so it cooks quicker. Bow! And then leave that to cook. Okay guys, this is the finished product. It took a little longer than I thought it would. Uh, that might have something to do with the fact that um, essentially there was a lot of ingredients going on. To be honest, these things vary, don't they? Uh, but altogether, I would say the whole thing took about an hour to cook the lasagna. Uh, I would, about 45 minutes for the chips uh, but all in all looks like it, it's great I'm about to get tucked in so uh, I'm out hold on peace <laughs>